Welcome. In a previous video, I installed QSync on a QNAP NAS, and I'll put a link in the description of my QNAP playlist where you can find that video, and I'll also put a link to the hardware I'm using, and if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So in this video, I'm going to be installing the QSync client on my Mac. So I'm logged into the QTS, I've installed QSync. On this overview tab here, you can see there's a link for Mac. So if I click on this, it will download the file. So I'll hit allow for download. I'll go to my download folder. And we see the QNAP sync client. I'll open it. I'll hit agree. I'll double click the installer. I'll click continue, install. It's going to ask for my password. So it's saying it has to close all my folder windows. I'll say OK. And now I'll hit close. So I'm going to close some of these windows I'm not using. Okay, I have a little notification up here. Oh, I clicked it away. Well, it was asking if I want to allow notifications for QNAP. So uh, that's up to you if you want to do that. So it says, welcome to QSync. It says the QSync client allows you to choose multiple folders on your Mac, which will be automatically synchronized with your NAS. You can also manage and delete existing sync tasks here. I'll click next. It says land sync allows local QSync clients to sync files with each other directly. This increases the shared folder sync speed and reduces NAS load, especially when multiple QSync clients are connected to the NAS via the internet. So what this is saying is if you have two computers in one location that sync to a remote QNAP NAS, is that you can have the two computers sync with each other, and then only one of the computers syncs to the NAS. So it will save bandwidth, and it'll be a lot faster. Because um, assuming your, your network at your site is probably a lot faster than your internet connection. So that's called the Enable LAN Sync. I'll hit Next. It says you can quickly browse syncing or synced files by window list, then share or open your files. So we have a little icon up here at the top. It's being covered by this window. I'll hit Next. It says Smart Delete. Local file deletion will not be replicated on the NAS. The locally deleted files will remain available on the NAS. So we can turn that on or off. I'll hit Next. It says Access Files via File Station. It says wherever you have a computer, just launch a web browser and log into the File Station to download, upload, and manage files. So you can access this on any web browser anywhere if you have it set up to do that. So I'll hit Finish. So we have Region here. It says Select your region. I'm Global. And so it's Global or China. Then I'll hit Apply. It says to find the NAS, click Search or type in the IP address or My QNAP Cloud URL of the NAS. So I will hit Search. See how fast it finds it on my network. Found it pretty quick. I'll select that. I'll hit select. I'll type in my username and password. And you can choose secure login. That's probably a good idea. I don't know that I have that set up on that yet. And it says automatically select the best connection method. It says assign a name to identify this computer on your NAS. So this is just MacBook Pro MVP. I'll hit apply. It says select folders to sync. Edit or delete the paired folders on your local device. Click Next to proceed without any modification. So it says shared folder on the NAS is uh, slash home slash dot qsync. So when you see a dot qsync that in like Linux or Unix, that is a hidden file. And then on my local device, we have users rick qsync. So users rick is my home directory and qsync is a folder within that. So I'll hit finish. Oh, and here's the notifications we saw earlier. I can turn notifications on or off here in my control panel under notifications and then QSync client. So I'll close that. And then here's the installer. I'll say I want to keep that for now. So if I go into my home folder, I should find the QSync directory. Okay, so here's the QSync directory. I'll drag a file in there. Now this is on my local machine, so I want to copy it. So I'm actually going to hold down the option key when I copy it in here because I don't want to take it off my desktop at this point. Typically you would though. You'd probably just want to have one copy on your computer. So I've copied that in there. If we look up here, we see that it uh, synced up. So I'll go down to the web interface. Okay, so we have QSync Central here. We'll look at devices, and this will show the MacBook Pro now. So we can block this device, edit settings, go to event logs, and remotely erase the device. Here's event logs. I can choose myself, and this will show the things that happened. It says I logged in, preference settings were modified, started the sync, uploaded a file, and synced a file. We have team folders. I'll cover that in a different video. We have shared folders, shared file links, and version control. So it mostly put things under device and event logs. So I can click on the edit settings. So this looks like what I had earlier in my previous video where I set up QSync, uh, where you can synchronize policy and mails. So I'll close that. 
I'm going to switch users here real quick. Okay, so I've logged in as myself. I was admin before. I'll click on File Station. I'll click on QSync down here. And here we have the reflections.jpg. So we can open this up on the QNAS. We're in the web browser now. So that worked fairly well. So the reason you might want to use this is if you uh, want your files synced on all your devices. So if you take your laptop on the road traveling and you want to have your files that are normally on a server on your laptop and you want to keep those in sync, it's a good option. I think this can work well if you do uh, like file sharing and you don't have a lot of people in your organization and you don't have a tremendous amount of data. You, you wouldn't want to use this for like uh, 20 terabytes of, you know, uh, archival footage, you know, video footage. But if you had like spreadsheets, things like that, I think this would work fairly well. And then every uh, client that's on this is really a separate backup of the file too, aside from also having a backup on the QNAP. So I think it's a very convenient feature. So I'm going to make some videos about other clients. I'll be, do Windows, I know, and uh, probably do Ubuntu if I can get that working. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.